Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to unleash some predators into the native UK bug enclosure. Now if you don't know what that is, I'll put one of those cards up there, click that link and it will take you to that video and everything's explained there to save me doing it again. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 hang on Sam, you can't just put predators in there. Well, I have been adding the occasional prey item over time off the camera and I did that because let's be honest guys, you're here to see spiders, right? You're here to see predatory animals. A lot of you have a lot less interest in some of the others. However, if you wanna see me collecting up things like isopods and so on and so forth, let me know and I might do a video based on that. So what is the prey items in there first? Well, there's a few little maggots in there which I kind of raised myself. Again, I can do a video on how to do that if you want to. So eventually they will turn into flies within there or they'll get eaten as maggots. Now there's also blue bottle casters that I actually bought online. So they are in the stage now where they are pupating, turning into flies from maggots. So I will have some blue bottle flies buzzing around in there within the week. And there's also various isopods put in there and tiny little harmless animals that I've caught along the way. But in today's video, we are looking purely at the spiders going into the tank. So let's do that now. But whoa, first things first. Sorry about this, but I completely forgot. You haven't seen this tank since I built it. So here is how it is now. Now, I did have this in a position with a lot less light before, which is why some of the plant matter has died off. We had some new growth, and unfortunately, that went. But some of this ivy has taken root. Some of the mosses have adapted a little bit better. The water feature will still be going, but I've turned it off at present so that you can hear me better on the camera. Now, I did find a few little slugs and snails in here before I added anything to this enclosure meaning we did have some organisms in that soil, which is great. And there could have even been more that I just haven't spotted yet. Now, I can't seem to see any of the prey items here. And I don't want to leave this lid off far too long because I don't want the blue bottles to hatch and fly away because they do so pretty quickly. So I know it might look like a little bit of a mess to a lot of you. It's not a fancy looking enclosure as such. But remember, we're trying to adapt it as best we can to just natural woodland UK environments. Anyway, let's have a look at what spiders will be introduced here. Spider number one, the Suggestria florentina, S. florentina, also known as the green fang spiders. I'm not sure if you can pick up the green tint there. Maybe the lighting isn't good enough. I can't quite tell till the editing process. But these guys are pretty highly defensive for UK spiders. Now, they weren't from the UK originally, but they have cultured over here and lived over here for a fairly long time. And you normally really only find these in the south, especially the southwest where I live. But of course, you can get them in Wales and up north too. It's just a little bit of a rarer sighting. Now, this one has lived in this tub here for a couple of weeks. She has made her tube-like strands, as you can see, everywhere all along here but normally they will find one specific spot and make a tubular web to guard it kind of like she's done down in there just took another shot here so you can try and see that green tinge a little bit better now these aren't spiders that i feel comfortable handling in any way like i would a house spider for example because they are a little bit more prone to biting again guys they're just trying to defend themselves they nothing really to fear. You leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. But isn't she a beautiful specimen? Let's move on. The next spider in the works is just your common house spider. Here we have one guarding some egg sacs. Now whether they're fertile or not, I am unsure. Now she's a lot smaller than the giant variety that I've shown in a previous video, but she's pretty nifty all the same. I actually released the Iatrica, the giant house spider, some time ago, and I wish I kind of kept it for this enclosure. Now there is one more spider and I have been searching for it for about two years in the UK, and I have found three of them. One, I believe to be a mature male. Well, I know it's a mature male. One I believe to be an adult female, and one I believe to be a young potential female. So we might have a breeding project in the tank. Can you guess what spider it is? Let's have a look. Ta-da! Here we have the infamous woodlouse spider with a scientific name provided for you on the screen. 
Now, I, as I said, I've got three of these. Now, this one is a mature male. I can tell he's got little hooks on his pedipalps, although you can't really see it in this lighting very well. Please don't escape. And the female does not. So it would be cool if we got a breeding project on the go here. What I love about these are how big their fangs are in comparison to their carapace and abdomen, or their bodies in general. They're whopping fangs. I know you can't see very well from here, but I assure you, look them up on Google, you will see the size of those monsters. Such cool looking spiders though, right? Just getting what footage I can here of this beauty because once it's in that enclosure, it's gonna be hard to find again. We'll be able to find the tube web quite easily due to the style of its web. And we'll be able to find the house spider quite easily due to the style of that one's web. But these guys, they lurk under rocks, stones, bits of wood. Finding them might be tricky. So let's get all these spiders into the enclosure. So guys, before I do that, there's something I want you to understand. You shouldn't really mix species of spiders together because they will attack each other, they will kill each other, they will eat each other, they can be territorial. The point of this project, as said in the previous video, so make sure to check that out so you have full understanding, was this is a three foot tank and these spiders are not that big right? The idea behind it is to see if there is a certain predator ruling the tank, to see if the prey can hide away well enough within that tank to survive, to see what breeds, what doesn't breed, what flourishes and what dies out. This is an experiment so that I can actually watch these animals as if they were in the wild. Now all of these guys were actually caught within my household. The house spider was in my kitchen, two woodlice spiders were in my back garden, one was in my front garden and the S. Florentina was on my back garden wall. So they have all lived in fairly close proximity anyway. And I don't want them going off and killing each other. That's not the purpose. It's to see how well they adapt in captivity to a huge surrounding. And it would be just great to see if we can, as I said before, discover where each one's living by its style of web. Now more and more things will be added to this tank over time, but this will probably be it in the way of spiders for a while, because I do not want to overpopulate the tank with predators only, because then we are just going to have an arena of death, and that is not the purpose of me doing this. This is a way for me to research them, to study them better, learn their behaviours better. So now that I've put that out there, you can watch me pop them in the tank. So you guys get a better view, I'm going to be freehanding the camera here, so I've only got really one arm to try and get the animals out. So, I do apologize for any shaky footage. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, dude. So this was the smaller of the woodlouse spiders, the one that I haven't sexed. This is gonna be very hard to do one-handed. I may have to swap approaches here. Oh, I didn't even see where that went. I'm gonna have to look at the footage now. But that's one in there, let's just check it's not on the pot anywhere. Nope, so it is in, hiding away already. Next is our mature male woodlouse spider. So you see he was bigger than the previous one. I believe the previous one to be sub adder or maybe one step off. Let's just see if we can convince him to come out. Come on dude, you've got all this freedom, you're staying in the pot. That's it. Move your back legs. Come on. Come on. Oh, and the leaf flipped upside down. Amazing footage, Sam. Cracking job. Anyway, but you can see, compared to the size of that spider, how big this tank is. So, now we're going to put in what I believe to be the mature female. She's ever so slightly bigger than that mature male. So, when I scooped this one up, I scooped her up with a load of dirt and a few wood lice. I think most of which are dead in this tub. But this was in a dry patch in my garden. Now, she doesn't actually look any bigger from here, but I can assure you she really, really is. So, oh, come on, gal.
Don't worry guys, I haven't crushed her. She just prefers to be in a darker area. And when this falls, she would have been quite comfy sitting there. Ah, wrong way again. Tell you what, I'll take this stuff out. Oh no, she's underneath the tub. Right, excuse me, will I find out where she's gone? Tip the tub. Check it. We're all clear. So she's in there somewhere. Now being one-handed with the house spider is going to be a little difficult, but she's also going to want to defend her sack. So if I lay this down, there's her sacks there. So what I'm actually going to do with this, I'm going to pop this back in the pot, incubate it myself, and then set the babies free. She's actually been on these sacks for a fairly long time now, meaning if they are fertile, they could be ready to go any moment. And although I was happy for a breeding project of woodlouse spiders, I don't really want a breeding project of house spiders in here, really, because they will, they will dominate the tank then, and they'll just be full of cannibalism and horribleness. So... I'll incubate those sacks and set the babies free. Now, where is she? There she is. There's a better look at our girl. Now, this one's going to be the most tricky, I think, because she won't want to leave her web unless she has to. So I'm going to have to destroy it. We'll leave some of her web in here so she can have a bit more comfort. Come on, girl. No, not that way. Look at this wonderful world you can explore. Why are you so determined to stay in your tub? Sit. You want to go up the top way? Hello. Oh, and there she goes. She won't be able to get out when the lid's on anyway. But I've still got another spider to rehouse yet. I don't really want her running around in my room because I want to see what she's going to do in this enclosure. But there she is. Now we have the infamous green fang spider. So again, this spider is fairly big, but in size comparison to this tank, there's plenty of places for her to make her home. Now again, she may not want to leave her web, so getting this one out might be a problem oh did you see that you can see the green there these can be quite defensive and they will actually rear which is quite interesting oh she is big So what I've done is I've placed her sort of in the middle between where the woodlouse spiders would have been and our new house spider in the enclosure. Oh look, we've got a little animal running around there. Did you see that little insect? But yes, here is our girl. Right, I don't want to faff her around too much. I don't want her to be stressed. I want her to find a comfy spot to make her home. I'm hoping she doesn't just stay there, but because this girl is due a feed, which I won't do on the camera I'm afraid, it's likely that she will go off to explore to find food, and when she does so, she'll then make a home in a more suitable place. If I were to feed her on camera now, she'd probably just stay within that bit of web for another long period of time. So that's all that we're going to be putting into the tank today. If you would like to see future updates of what I'm adding in, whether predator or prey, let me know in the comments below. Just write predator if that's all you're interested in seeing, prey if that's all you're interested in seeing, or both if you really want to see everything that I put into this enclosure. If not, I will stick to the more creepy side of things and update you, of course, on how things go. 
So, there we have it folks. If you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. This is actually the new spot for where my telly goes. So what I do is place on four bits of wood, like so, leaving gaps for ventilation in the middle. So yes, on future updates, you will see my TV on here. Don't worry, they can't all still breathe. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Stay home and stay safe during this lockdown period. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.